Greetings. This is the disembodied voice of Kai Lee, Program Officer for Science at the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. I want to thank Matt Keane for inviting me to speak and for persisting uh, when I, uh, I had developed a schedule conflict uh, and persuading me that I could become a disembodied voice uh, and a PowerPoint in front of you. I apologize, of course, for not being with you, but I'm happy that Andy Rowe will be present to field the tough questions. Like all evaluators, Andy sees that we haven't taken aboard all of his advice, and I hope that in your discussions, some of that largely productive tension between the people inside the implementing organization and the evaluators can come out. Some of these slides are rich in text, and I won't try to cover all the material. I've asked that hard copies be distributed so that you can follow along and make notes if you'd like to review and read more later. There are two things to report in this talk. First, Andy and I have devised and implemented a novel procedure to fund science that advances the conservation objectives of the Packard Foundation. We did this, secondly, through developmental evaluation, and the developmental process shaped both the innovation and how I have come to approach grant making. I came to the Foundation in 2007 after a career as a college teacher, the final portion at Williams College in Massachusetts. I had no prior experience in grant making. But I did have decades of experience uh, watching and participating in the struggle to make academic research useful in environmental policy. First, a little background on the Packard Foundation. As you can see, last year we made grants of $253 million. Uh, that's quite a large uh, number for private philanthropy, but of course quite modest in comparison to federal agency uh, <coughs> funding, funding streams. Our programs, are, our grant making is focused on four programs. Uh, the first, called Children, Families, and Communities, uh, aims at improving the well-being of kids. Um, and our signature program has been uh, a decades-long effort to uh, extend health insurance coverage to children, something that was ultimately successful in 2009 after a 25-year effort uh, that include, included uh, pilot programs in 38 different states. Our population and reproductive health program uh, is a core funder of the Planned Parenthood Federation in the United States and works as well in South Asia and Eastern Africa. Our local grant making program uh, is at the other spatial scale. Uh, it works from San Mateo County, just north of our headquarters in Los Altos, uh, down to Monterey County, uh, that, that five county area. And we support uh, a variety of, uh, of local uh, charitable activities uh, in the arts, food banks, uh, and, and uh, a wide gamut of things. About half of our grant making is in the conservation and science program. And this is where I work. We, have, uh, we are a major funder in the area of ocean conservation uh, as well as basic research related to the sea. Uh, we have a major effort uh, large, working with the Climate Works Foundation in San Francisco uh, on climate and land use, uh, particularly focused on uh, tropical forests uh, and on biofuels. Uh, our land conservation efforts have historically been uh, concentrated in the western United States, uh, to, including very substantial efforts in California. Uh, we, as we mentioned before, we fund basic research through the Packard Fellows Program, which each year finds uh, 16 to 20 of the most talented young scientists in American universities and gives them five years of unrestricted support. And finally, there's the program I'm, I'm here to talk about today, Linking Knowledge with, with Action, uh, which is a, a program of funding research in support of conservation. So our, our target is, is to affect conservation. The Packard Foundation supports five different aspects of science and is itself a user of science and research. You can see on the right hand side that the, the overall target or style of the foundation is grounded on evidence-based decisions, the development of new technologies, and the improvement of the information available to and used by the public. So we put funding into basic research. Uh, on, on this side, as you see, that's a substantial uh, a large fraction of what we do in science. Uh, we also fund uh, <clears throat> both applied science uh, and uh, user engagement, that is uh, improving communications and, and public understanding. Um, and then 
in the background, uh, uh, we've invested substantial amounts in building science capacity through programs like the Packard Fellows, uh, which is increasing the capability of academic science. Uh, and we have also uh, promoted various uh, aspects of science literacy and education, uh, perhaps most notably not in the foundation itself, but in the Monterey Bay Aquarium. The foundation also values science and research as a component of its own internal decision-making processes. Uh, we take pride in, in grounding our funding in evidence-based uh, evidence decision-making. Uh, we use analysis in developing strategies and determining the return on investment. Um, we use evaluations and monitoring for most of our grant-making. Uh, and the staff includes uh, several uh, people like myself that have sci scientific backgrounds uh, relevant to the grant-making that we're doing. Here's a budgetary uh, profile of our activities. Uh, you can see uh, that, that the bulk of our work is in basic research, uh, in core support for the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, which is a world-class cl oceanographic research center, uh, as well as in the Packard Fellowships in Science and Engineering. Uh, in addition, we, we do things uh, in the other categories called out in the previous slide. We've been investing in building science capacity, which in the conservation space has centered on the Center for Ocean Solutions uh, based at Stanford University. Uh, we're also funding applied science, uh, looking for solutions uh, in projects such as uh, the project called PISCO, uh, which is a four-university collaboration along the west coast of North America. Uh, and we spend uh, a size considerably larger sum on other applied science within the conservation and science program. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, we also fund user engagement uh, through programs like the Communications Partnership for Science in the Sea, uh, which helps to train scientists to become more effective communicators. And again, we spend a larger uh, sum in, on user engagement elsewhere in conservation and science, both in my program and elsewhere. Now, over the years, we have thought about and, uh, and worked in several different pathways toward improving the better use of science, um, improving the use of science in conservation. And this logic model uh, framing of it, uh, I think, provides a brief sketch of ideas that have come and gone that we've considered uh, more seriously and less seriously. It's not a historical account. It doesn't show the bumbling around. But I think it does illustrate uh, the, the, the way in which priorities have emerged over time. So on the left-hand column, you see uh, the, the, the kind of starting conditions. Uh, and and uh, let me just let you read that quickly, uh, that the use of science is by no means uh, straightforward uh, in, in decision-making and in, in, um, uh, in conservation. Uh, in response to this situation, <clears throat> most of what's called science decision making, uh, science for decision making and uh, science for conservation, excuse me, uh, is really what uh, Andy Rowe calls uh, science led research. That is uh, funding for activities where the production of knowledge is it, the goal. Uh, there is often a hope for the use of that knowledge, uh, but that's not an explicit part of the goal. And indeed, uh, things often don't work out very well uh, in terms of use. Uh, another alternative uh, that, that uh, uh, periodically uh, emerges is to undertake a campaign for an expanded national environmental policy uh, that would also increase its investments uh, in scientific knowledge. Now, um, this might be. Uh, this, this is a, a, a secondary purpose of much of, what, of our funding, but we believe that the political environment today is not conducive uh, to a scaling up of investments in environmental science uh, or to better uh, coupling of that science to, uh, to, to decision making, uh, given the current state of high polarization within the political realm. Uh, this this leaves uh, two other uh, alternatives. I've mentioned improving scientists as communicators and the work of COMPASS uh, and also the Aldo Leopold Leadership Program uh, based at Stanford, 
um, uh, of training scientists to become more effective communicators and to build networks of scientists uh, who can uh, work together to put issues on the agenda uh, and otherwise improve the use of sci science in, in public decision making. And the fourth alternative, uh, labeled one here, uh, is use-inspired research, uh, which is the approach that I'll be talking about uh, in the remainder of this talk. Uh, use-inspired research uh, takes shape in our activities in a, in a grant-making approach that we call linking knowledge with action. Uh, linking knowledge with action is a grant-making approach that is designed to foster and enable uh, use-inspired research. Uh, we do that by focusing on the principles uh, identified in the box at the, at the lower part of this slide. Um, and and uh, you'll see that we work uh, actively with both decision makers, users of knowledge, and scientists from the outset. Secondly, we focus on research questions that are likely to be useful uh, and, and answerable in time for the decisions uh, that are pending, so that we don't want to, uh, you know, this, obviously there's a great deal of need for uh, scientific knowledge uh, to form the basis of uh, better decisions in the future. With our limited resources, we're focusing on things uh, where there is a question that's known and where the answer could make a difference uh, in, a, in an identifiable, measurable way. And finally, and perhaps uh, not least important, we work to, to help decision makers um, to understand better the unit, the limits of the existing knowledge and the scope of the uncertainties that are out there. Um, uh, when we raise the question of who is the user and what is the use at the beginning of the grant making process, uh, these questions are ones that are surprising to prospective grantees who are accustomed to the science-led model where the production of knowledge is really the, the goal. But also these questions are surprising to many prospective users who are quite unused to being consulted uh, and unused to being given a role in shaping uh, the questions that the scientists uh, attempt, to, uh, attempt to answer. Um, <clears throat> so it's important for us to be reaching out in both directions uh, with the fact that uh, linking knowledge with action is about, uh, about enabling competing ideas of what is, constitutes good knowledge to work together. And, and here, what we're trying to uh, point out is that between the community of users and the community of science scientists, uh, there are actually a set of uh, objectives about uh, for, or criteria for determining what knowledge is valuable uh, that, that are in tension with each other. That is, there are different conceptions in these two communities of what constitutes valuable knowledge. And to bridge these concepts, uh, to bridge these standards without compromising them uh, is a matter of ongoing management uh, rather than in, uh, coming up with some sort of cook, cookbook solution. Uh, what we're aiming for, uh, however, is uh, to, to try to optimize uh, for particular situations in conservation uh, three different attributes. The attribute that, uh, that is uh, probably most familiar from the scientific uh, world is credibility of whether the knowledge that's produced uh, is reproducible, reliable, whether it's been validated by peer review, the review of other experts. Um, uh, and that's, uh, the, that is the goal toward which scientists uh, are working in most of their work. However, in use, in the, when it comes to use, knowledge that is, that is valuable is going to be salient, that is, it will be timely and relevant uh, to the circumstances. And it will be legitimate, that is, it will be uh, the kind of knowledge that is uh, credible not only to other scientists, uh, but to the various stakeholders in the decision-making arena, uh, such that when the knowledge, uh, when, the, when the decision itself, the use itself is challenged uh, later on, uh, the science will not be an issue. It won't be a question of, did you rely on uh, poorly formulated uh, knowledge uh, formulated by a uh, closed cabal of experts, but rather let's ta talk about the value differences, let's talk about the policy choices, uh, but the science itself is not in question, and that's, that's the goal of, of what we call uh, legitimacy. Uh, now, as you'll see, these goals are not fully compatible. Uh, credibility, building credibility in a scientific sense often takes time as uh, uh, conflicting results and uh, theoretical debates are sorted out. 
uh, that slow p pace uh, often makes the uh, uh, preserving salience quite challenging. Uh, or to put it another way, if uh, if science is to be uh, salient, uh, it may have it may not reach the credibility uh, that you would be accustomed to in the academic context. So another way to to bring this together is to uh, to say that what we're trying to do with linking knowledge with action um, is to find those uh, places where uh, where salience and credibility uh, can both be um, optimized uh, in this in this ideal uh, ideal of fundamental use inspired research, uh, and in doing that uh, to preserve the high credibility or to, to attain the high credibility uh, that one finds in the basic science world, while also uh, achieving the levels of use that one finds in applied research. Uh, the word fundamental in this context uh, is is uh, an important part of the goal, uh, and it. It, it really draws its uh, inspiration from the way that Louis Pasteur made fundamental discoveries in microbiology as he developed the germ theory of disease, which was, of course, of immense practical util utility in medicine. Uh, so fundamental means um, we're, trying, we're looking for questions that are interesting on scientific grounds, uh, and today many of the problems of conservation do raise fundamental issues in the social sciences, such as how to align incentives, to nudge choices in socially desirable directions. Uh, there are still many fundamental questions about the oceans uh, within the province of the biophysical sciences, such as questions about how ocean currents may be expected to shift with a changing climate. Uh, and those shifts, of course, could have immense human uh, implications in terms of uh, things like the failure of monsoons and the large crops that depend on, the, on, on monsoons as a water source. So there's no lack of fundamental use-inspired questions uh, out there. Uh, this is why uh, the linking knowledge with action is not about um, uh, an academic uh, kind of pursuit at all, uh, and why we think that this, if we can develop a practical method of uh, allocating funds this way, that this is of wider significance uh, in, in conservation generally. That practical approach uh, is something that, that uh, that Andy Rowe played a basic role in, uh, as, because what linking knowledge with action does is uh, it has taken shape as a protocol, uh, a set of questions used uh, to design grants um, and targeted uh, to specific grantees and grants and, and situations, um, stated here as, uh, and, and then stated as questions that we ask as part of the due diligence process as you'll see uh, in this in this list on the on 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 the upper on the upper upper level, um, so we're asking things. Uh, first of all, a practical question: Does a project, uh, a science investment, align with the conservation strategies already important uh, to the foundation, and primarily um, as articulated uh, by my colleagues in the conservation programs? Uh, is the situation one in which knowledge uh, by itself can make a substantial difference? Uh, how will the boundary between users and scientists be spanned? That is, uh, is there a boundary organization uh, that can uh, mediate these uh, tensions between uh, salience, legitimacy, and credibility, uh, or do the scientists and users themselves have that have that capacity? Uh, that leads to these questions about uh, capability, uh, and also uh, whether the users and researchers are uh, organized in such a fashion that's likely to yield useful knowledge. Uh, we want to see measurable changes within a uh, three-year time frame. Uh, uh, I'll come back to, in a moment to uh, what that means in practice, but the goal here is to invest in things that, that, um, uh, that have clear uh, returns uh, that, that we can identify. And of course, we want to do that not just uh, in the spirit of applied science to solve specific concrete issues, but also to ha exert positive outcomes over the long term. Uh, these design questions, the design protocol, um, is then reformulated uh, when the grant is uh, awarded uh, into a set of questions uh, for reporting for final and interim reports um, <clears throat> by the grantee. And they are these questions are again targeted to the specific grantee in the specific situation, uh, and they are, uh, they are they are then sent as part of the grant agreement, so that uh, the 
grantees uh, understand at the beginning what our expectations look like. So the uh, the concept here is to um, is that to reduce the to make clearer the various dimensions uh, that we are asking grantees to strive for and to work with users uh, on this. Uh, but again, reflecting the same due diligence framework, the protocol uh, framework um, uh, that links researchers, users, uh, and the donor uh, at, in, during the design phase. This protocol was the product of developmental evaluation. Uh, Andy Rowe proposed the initial draft of this protocol based upon his understanding of the theory of change uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, that theory of change was uh, largely implicit to me, uh, that is, I, do, I don't disagree with it as it has become more explicit, but Andy played a critical role in helping me to, uh, to put into words the things that I was trying to accomplish. Uh, over time, the protocol has been elaborated. Uh, the extension, for example, from the design phase into the reporting requirements <clears throat> is something that happened partway through the process. But the underlying conceptual structure has not shifted, and I think in that sense the theory of change is what we started out with um, uh, and we become more refined and nuanced in how we do this. Now I want you to notice how evaluation is woven into this approach. Uh, there is a focus on outcomes as a basic decision criterion when we fo focus on use. Uh, and that outcome focus is, uh, I think, a hallmark of the kind of evaluation that people like Michael Quinn Patton have been uh, pioneering. Uh, and that goes to this whole question of what uh, strategic investment is trying to do. There's an emphasis on the social process of collaborative knowledge production. Um, uh, and Andy will, uh, will be able to comment more on how uh, our activities in uh, enacting this process of collaborative production looks to an outside observer. Um, and I'll, I'll look to him to, uh, to, uh, to, to stir uh, discussion amongst you all uh, after this talk. Uh, this approach typically involves the grant maker as a broker of a relationship uh, between users um, and researchers. Uh, that's an unusual role uh, that often uh, calls upon uh, a boundary organization or uh, calls upon a grantee's capabilities uh, to serve as a boundary organization. Uh, let me give you an example to make this uh, abstraction a little more com concrete. We've been funding work on developing new harvest management methods for small-scale third world fisheries. Um, instead of funding the researcher directly, we turn to our partner, the Marine Stewardship Council. Uh, the Marine Stewardship Council uh, is the organization that uh, labels sustainably caught seafood. Uh, they've been interested in extending their uh, labeling certification process into small developing country fisheries. Uh, which often lack the capacity or the scale for the conventional methods of gauging the health of fish stocks. Uh, the researcher had trouble getting his papers accepted in scientific journals, uh, that is endangering credibility. But the technical staff of the Marine Stewardship Council uh, pitched in, diagnosed the problem, determined that the new method could in fact be proven to, be, to work, and now a paper has been accepted and the MSC is turning to planning pilot scale implementation in four countries to establish proof of concept. So here's a situation where an engaged uh, user uh, is not only helping to shape the, the research uh, agenda, but in fact participating in the research activity uh, so as to uh, advance uh, their, own, uh, their, their own priorities uh, in use uh, going, on, going forward. Um, in, in, doing the, in the developmental uh, process, uh, it's important to see that the evaluator and the program officer uh, were undertaking a partnership. The partnership is manifested in the fact that the evaluator proposed the basic innovation, the, the concrete form of the innovation in uh, drafting the pro protocol. And evaluation uh, is now embedded in the linking knowledge with action approach, as I mentioned before. Uh, Andy also worked with the first round grantees uh, to refine uh, both their practice and our practice as grant makers. Uh, so uh, he not only helped conceptually, but also in developing uh, the way, the practical uh, way that we carry this out. It's worth pointing out that the developmental process itself followed the social model of linking knowledge with action. So there's a kind of fractal uh, uh, aspect to this. Uh, we looked at what would be useful 
uh, we engaged in the joint production of knowledge between the, uh, the, uh, the evaluator and uh, the grant maker. And we cultivated a reflective approach. That is, we were thinking about knowledge not only as product, but as a process of interaction between the two of us. Uh, although Andy got me to the point where I can now fly solo, and I have been doing so for about the last two years. How has this all worked out? Uh, well, when we tried to summarize linking knowledge with action for our board uh, last December, uh, we prepared a set of uh, uh, micro case studies, um, which is what I'll, uh, which, which is the content of the next couple of slides. Um, I'll, I'm going to skip through this pretty quickly, but what I want to point out is that the estimated impact of the grants we made uh, in this uh, preliminary, this initial population uh, that we looked at. Uh, about uh, about forty percent of them uh, were judged by me as uh, too soon to tell, and this is of course inherent in investing in knowledge that within the term of the grant, what's being done is the knowledge is being produced. So whether it's going to be used and how useful it will prove to be are things that lie beyond the scope of the grant uh, uh, itself, uh, but are in fact the objective of the grant. So. Uh, this, this, there is an ambiguity involved here uh, in terms of the feedback that, uh, that I can receive, that the foundation can receive, that is implicit, uh, inherent in this, in this approach. Mind you, uh, in the conventional science-led approach, uh, the use of knowledge is not an explicit goal at all. So the, the ratings of how, soon, you know, how much impact the science investment had in the science-led approach, uh, is that's simply a question that isn't being asked. Uh, let me skip through these, ask you to read through the, these micro cases on your own and come to the last one, uh, a, a six-year-long project um, in, in Mexico that um, was a university NGO consortium uh, that, that goes by the Spanish uh, acronym PANGAS. Uh, a PANGA is a small fishing vessel. Uh, and and uh, and so the, the a, a somewhat awkward title was crafted so that the acronym would be Pangas. Uh, uh, at any rate, uh, the Pangas uh, was from the beginning a collaboration between NGO scientists uh, and the University of Arizona, uh, where many of them had been educated. So there was a there was already an old school tie there. Uh, Pangas has built a set of relationships with. Uh, the two principal Mexican uh, management agencies in the northern part of the Gulf of California, uh, the Sea of Cortez, uh, and they have made uh, the Panga science has become uh, fundamental to a set of fishery management plans uh, that were authorized by a law passed in 2007. So that was after Pangas was started uh, that the use opportunity came into focus. Uh, they've worked diligently at this uh, and have um, and, and have conducted a program uh, that of, of classic, of really of fundamental use-inspired research. Fundamental in the sense that uh, uh, much of the work they did in oceanography, uh, in ethnography of the fishing communities, um, as well as in developing community-based ways of uh, assessing the states, the state of the fishery. Uh, of various fisheries. Uh, these are all uh, have been at the cutting edge of uh, fishery science uh, and, and management, uh, re natural resource, community based natural resource management, and yet they've, they've managed to be quite useful. Uh, so, so, what they've done now uh, is to create a durable uh, relationship between the NGOs uh, and the agencies. Uh, having said that, uh, our funding for Pangas has now ended. Uh, and the institutional sustainability of this project is not clear. The, the scientific uh, research team has been dispersed, uh, and we are now thinking through with other donors, um, uh, including our Gulf of California program within the foundation, how best to retain uh, these relationships uh, uh, once a, the boundary function in Pangas uh, uh, has, has, uh, has, has dwindled away, but of course the relationships are already there, so we have a reason to think that, that we'll be able to, to proceed. So that's an example, um, the Pangas story is an example, I think, of a success. Uh, it's one that uh, emerged during the developmental process. Andy worked with um, some of the Pangas scientists, um, and they in turn taught us uh, important lessons about uh, how linking knowledge with action would take shape. Let me 
turn next to um, uh, some things that, that Andy discovered in doing a formative evaluation in 2012 uh, of our how we've been doing uh, up to this point. Uh, the first is that linking knowledge with action seems to be working, uh, though as with so many of our grants, it is too early to tell for sure. Uh, grantees that we've worked with have mostly had prior experience with use-inspired research already. That is, what we've done is to uh, energize a coalition of the willing, uh, and we have not we have not yet um, been engaging uh, researchers uh, for whom use-inspired research is a wholly new uh, a, a pr way to think about uh, their science. The grantees we've been working with believe that their work will be uh, effective um, and and uh, gauged against their prior experiences with use-inspired approaches. Uh, they also think that linking knowledge with action can be adopted by other donors um, by, by developing uh, a donor role like the one that I've developed uh, and using a protocol along the same lines uh, that Andy and I have put together. Uh, despite the fact that the program officer is, is involved in a more substantive way than is uh, conventional in the science-led model, uh, to the grantees, the grant-making process does not seem more burdensome, uh, but it also it does increase the likelihood of use, which they find a positive. That being said, uh, there is none of us, uh, donor or grantees, are entirely clear about how to identify use, what the indicators of use are, uh, and as, as the indicators that we can observe during the period of the grant still seem, seem to rely almost entirely on judgment. Um, so that's where it stands. I would say uh, so far so good is the, uh, is the judgment that I would draw, uh, but I think that we've, we've demonstrated that it's possible to do something concretely that people have been talking about as, a, as an aspiration. So in sum, linking knowledge with action, uh, is uh, is an evolving practice uh, that that is uh, stimulated and driven forward by an evaluative protocol uh, that enables uh, reflective praxis. That is uh, what I'm learning, what our grantees are learning, is partly tacit, uh, but the evaluation, the evaluative dimensions, uh, helps us to make the practice more reflective. That is, the, so that we can uh, respond to the feedback from our real world of grantees and users uh, and, and conservation impact uh, adapting the process uh, as we go along. Uh, and as I said, the adapt adaptation has been quite extensive at the detail and nuance level. The fundamentals theory of change uh, does not seem to uh, have uh, altered very much. And indeed, uh, I think another important conclusion is that Funding of use-inspired research can work, but it's not the conventional way of funding science. Uh, and the tensions among credibility, salience, legit and legitimacy need to be managed continuously, which begins by recognizing, recognizing them uh, in the process of developing a grant. Uh, <clears throat> learning is an explicit outcome of what we're doing, uh, and the knowledge that's produced is not just an output but uh, the, the seed of or the nurturing of an existing relationship uh, that is ongoing so that the knowledge uh, takes shape in action, uh, but in a way where the actors can act and the researchers can continue uh, to do science. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a, a transformational uh, relationship that, that uh, demands that both parties uh, become different. Uh, it rather it aims to enhance the roles of both parties. And finally, uh, we're, act, we're now uh, undertaking some experiments on uh, diffusion of these uh, fun, these, uh, the innovation constituted by linking knowledge with action. That's going to be a challenge, uh, uh, but this is where we see possibilities for scaling up and for testing the viability of these ideas at a large scale, for example, uh, in a federal agency uh, or in a large NGO. Uh, in order for this to work, we're going to need um, the help of people in the evaluation community, uh, both for using linking knowledge with action as a counterfactual for formative evaluations of science funding programs that might be relying on a science-led model, uh, and to ask the question, well, how different would it be if you took use and users seriously uh, in your funding approach? Uh, and also, we would certainly encourage um, our example um, uh, be considered in your, your own developmental practice. Uh, in sum, we need your help, uh, but we hope to have put some interesting things. 
Thank you very much. Um, the, the, the information on this slide provides uh, additional information. Also, you've got um, uh, my email address uh, for those questions that uh, Andy Rowe is, uh, is declining to answer uh, or that you think of later on. Thanks again for your attention. I hope you have a great conference.